pituitary gland overview. The pituitary gland, or hypothesis, is a round structure about half an inch in diameter located on the inferior aspect of the brain, commonly referred to as the master gland. The pituitary secretes hormones that control the secretion of hormones by other endocrine glands. The pituitary itself is controlled by the hypothalamus, an adjacent area of the brain that is connected to the pituitary by the pituitary stalk. The pituitary gland is divided into the anterior and posterior lobes. Abnormalities of pituitary function are caused by over-secretion or under-secretion of any of the hormones produced or released by the gland. Abnormalities of the anterior and posterior portions of the gland may occur independently. The anterior pituitary. The major hormones of the anterior pituitary gland are follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, prolactin, AZTH, TSH, and growth hormone. The secretion of these major hormones is controlled by releasing factors secreted by the hypothalamus. These releasing factors reach the anterior pituitary by way of the bloodstream in a special circulation called the pituitary portal system, blood system. These hormones released by the anterior pituitary enter the general circulation and are transported to their target organs. The main function of TSH, ACTH, SH, and LH is the release of hormones from other endocrine glands. Prolactin acts on the breasts to stimulate milk production. Growth hormone is a protein hormone that increases protein synthesis in many tissues, increases the breakdown of fatty acids in adipose tissue, and increases the glucose level in the blood. These actions of growth hormone are essential for normal growth, although other hormones such as, th as thyroid hormone and insulin are required as well. Stress, exercise, and low blood glucose levels increase the secretion of growth hormone. Posterior pituitary. The important hormones secreted by the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland are vasopressin, also called antidiuretic hormone or ADH and oxytocin. These hormones are synthesized in the hypothalamus and travel from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary gland for storage. Vasopressin controls the excretion of water by the kidney. Its secretion is stimulated by an increase in osmolality of the blood or by a decrease in blood pressure. Oxytocin facilitates milk ejection during lactation and increases the force of uterine contractions during labor and delivery. Oxytocin secretion is stimulated during pregnancy and at childbirth. Hypofunction of the pituitary gland can result from disease of the pituitary gland itself or disease of the hypothalamus, but the result is essentially the same. Hypopituitarianism is also a complication of radiation therapy to the head and neck area. The total destruction of the pituitary gland by trauma tumor or vascular lesion removes all stimuli that are normally received by the thyroid, the gonads, and the adrenal glands. The result is extreme weight loss, emaciation, atrophy of all adrenal glands and the, their organs, hair loss, impotence, amenorrhea, hypometabolism, and hypoglycemia. Coma and death can occur if the missing hormones are not replaced. Oversecretion, hypersecretion, most commonly involves ACTH or growth hormone and results in Cushing syndrome or acromegaly. Acromegaly is an excess of growth hormone in adults, results in bone and soft tissue deformities and enlargement of the viscera without an increase in height. In children, oversecretion of growth hormone results in gigantism with a person reaching seven or even eight feet tall an insufficient secretion of growth hormone during childhood results in generalized limited growth and dwarfism. Hyperfunction of the anterior pituitary. In the patient with giganticism, the onset of growth hormone hypersecretion occurs before puberty, which causes rapid proportional growth in the length of all bones. In the patient with agromegaly, excessive growth hormone secretion occurs after closure of the growth plates in the bone, 
during puberty and produces increased skeletal thickness, hypertrophy of the skin, and enlargement of many organs such as the liver and the heart. Bone thinning and bone cell overgrowth occur slowly. Degenerative Degeneration of joint cartilage and hypertrophy, hypertrophy of ligaments, vocal cords, and eustachian tubes are common. Nerve entrapment occurs because of tissue overgrowth and myelin loss in peripheral nerves exists. Because growth hormone blocks the action of insulin, hyperglycemia is also common. The goal of treatment is to normalize hormone levels. Drug therapy used alone or in combination with surgery and or radiation is the general course of treatment. Most, the most common drugs are dopamine agonists, which stimulate dopamine receptors in the brain and inhibit the release of many pituitary hormones, but most specifically the growth hormone. Diabetes insipitus is a disorder of the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland that is characterized by a deficiency of ADH or vasopressin. Excessive thirst, polydipsia, and a large volume and large volumes of dilute urine characterize the disorder. It may occur secondary to head trauma, brain tumor, or surgical ablation or irradiation of the pituitary gland. It may also occur with infections of the central nervous system, such as meningitis, encephalitis, tuberculosis, or with tumors such as metastatic disease, lymphoma of the breast or lung. Another cause of diabetes insipitus is the failure of the renal tubules to respond to ADH. This nephrogenic form may be related to hypokalemia, hypercalcemia, and a variety of medications such as lithium or declomycine. Without the action of ADH on the distal nephron of the kidney, and an, enor an enormous daily output of very dilute water-like urine with a specific gravity of 1.001 to 1.005 occurs. The urine contains no abnormal substances such as glucose or albumin. Because of the intense thirst, the patient tends to drink 2 to 20 liters of fluid daily and craves cold water. In the hereditary form of diabetes insipitus, the primary symptoms may begin at birth. In adults, the onset of diabetes insipitus may be abrupt or insidious. The disease cannot be controlled by limiting fluid intake because the high volume loss of urine continues even without fluid replacement. Attempts to restrict fluids cause the patient to experience an insatiable craving for fluid and to develop hypernatremia and severe dehydration. The objectives of treatment are to replace ADH, which is usually a long-term therapeutic program, and then to ensure adequate fluid replacement and to identify and correct the underlying intracranial pathology. If it's nephrogenic caused, then it will require different management uh, approaches. So pharmacologic therapy begins with DDAVP, otherwise known as desmopressin. It's a synthetic vasopressin without the vascular effects of natural ADH and is particularly valuable because it has a longer duration of action and fewer adverse effects other than preparations previous uh, effects, fewer effects than other preparations previously used to treat the disease. It is administered intranasally. The patient sprays the solution into their nose through a flexible calibrated plastic tube. And one to two administrations daily are required, usually to control the symptoms. The syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion includes excessive ADH secretion from the pituitary gland even in the face of subnormal serum osmolality. Patients with this disorder cannot excrete a dilute urine. They retain fluids and develop a sodium deficiency known as dilutional hypodetremia. Disorders of the central nervous system, such as, the head, such as head injury, brain surgery, or tumor, and infection are thought to produce SIADH by direct stimulation of the pituitary gland. Some medications, such as vincristine, V2, 
phenothiazines, tricyclic antidepressants, and thiazide diuretics, and nicotine have been implicated in SIADH. They either directly stimulate the pituitary gland or increase the sensitivity of renal tubules to cir circulating ADH. Eliminating the underlying cause, if possible, and restricting fluid intake are typical interventions for managing this syndrome. Because retained water is excreted slowly through the kidneys, the extracellular fluid volume contracts and the serum sodium concentration gradually increases toward normal. Diuretics such as ferrosamide or Lasix may be used along with fluid restriction if severe hyponatremia is present. Close monitoring of fluid intake and output, daily weight, urine and blood chemistries, and neurologic status is indicated for the patient at risk for SIADH. Supportive measures and explanations of procedures and treatments assist the patient to deal with this disorder. Hormones secreted from the anterior pituitary gland regulate growth, metabolism, pigment changes, and sexual development. These functions are affected when the pituitary gland secretes too much or too little of one or more hormones. The posterior pituitary gland secretes vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. Posterior pituitary problems result in fluid and electrolyte imbalance. Nursing care for the patient with pituitary disorders includes assessment, patient education, evaluation of patient response to therapy, and providing support. A complete history and physical are performed to detect specific clinical findings. The patient also undergoes many diagnostic tests and relies on the nurse for specific instructions and explanations. Surgical interventions may be indicated or the patient may need lifelong hormone replacement. Physical and emotional support are critical.